Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I'm your host, Jim Massett. Okay, I want to discuss with you this plethora of charts here. And this was a post by James West. And he states, basic physics tells us that increased CO2 levels must result in increased temperatures, rising sea levels, receding glaciers, and land ice depleting sea ice, acidifying oceans. These and other lines of evidence are all observed. Okay, so let's start here. And changes are emerging across the climate system over the last 2,000 years. So in this first uh, line of graphics here, we're looking at the parts per million of CO2. And this scale goes back to 1850. And this is a scale uh, from 250 to uh, 400 plus. And as we can see here, the increasing trend is unmistakable. And they indicate uh, certain uh, notable events, such as greenhouse gases identified, climate sensitivity estimated, global warming discovered. And notice that that has occurred during the 1930s. Greenhouse gases identified back in the 1860s and the climate sensitivity just towards the end of the 19th century. And now, look at this one. Ocean warming. An increase of 409 zeta joule since 1971. That, remember, zeta joules 10 to the 21. That is an incredible amount of heat energy waiting to bite us in the butt, to be quite blunt. And going back to the CO2 increasing, it's increased 46% above pre-industrial levels. Okay, take a look at sea level rising. Right? Scale from 0 to 20 centimeters. Excuse me, yeah, centimeters. 22 centimeters increase since 1900, sea level rising. 22 centimeters. And in some places, it's accelerating. And here's the global temperature increase. And here they have a peg of about 1.2 C. But you can clearly see that especially in the last 50, 60 years, there is an unmistakable increasing trend. Look at the troposphere warming, okay? About 0.7 C since the 1980s alone. And again, we see a clear increasing trend. Arctic sea ice melting. Clearly a decreasing trend a loss of 34% in summer extent since the 1980s, right? So this looks like millions of square kilometers are the units here. And then they put, throw in this interesting thing about cherry uh, blossoms that on average is 12 days earlier uh, in Kyoto. And then the humidity over land is increased by about 4% since the 1980s. 70s. Makes sense. Warmer air can hold more moisture. And what they've done here is a kind of a, a compacted scale. So what this here on the right is basically a blow up from this dash line to here. So from zero to 2000 years ago, and then where this indicator is with this dash line, corresponds to 1850 to the present day, thereabouts. And you can kind of see, if you're looking at global temperature, it's like it was actually even declining a little bit, and then it jumps up. Okay. The sea level rise sees a, a bit of a spike. CO2 levels, a bit of a spike. And then a, a bit of a spike for Arctic sea loss, but in the other direction down. And then here's your, your cherry blossoms blooming 
earlier. So these are just some of the evidence for what's happening due to us burning fossil fuels and putting all that heat energy into the atmosphere, only of which 7% stays in the atmosphere doing all of this. The other 93% is gone here into the ocean. Okay. So real predictions by climate scientists that have already been observed. Global mean surface temperature has increased much as predicted in the 70s and 80s. Ocean heat content has increased. Winters are warming faster than summers. Nights are warming faster than days. Arctic is warming faster than the rest of the world. Three, four, some, in some places, five times the rest of the world. Stratosphere is cooling. Glaciers are retreating. The Arctic sea ice is shrinking and becoming thinner. That means we're losing the multi-year ice. Permafrost is thawing. That's the better term to use. If you have an ice lens, yes, the ice lens are melting. Permafrost is thawing. Ocean pH content has decreased. In other words, it's getting more acidic. Atmospheric oxygen has decreased. And for those who follow my channel for a while, you know why. Increasing stratification, decreasing ocean uh, productivity. Phytoplankton provide 55 to 80% of atmospheric oxygen. If their productivity is decreasing, so is the oxygen they produce. Sea levels are rising. The ratio of uh, 13 carbon to 12 carbon in atmospheric CO2 has changed. Emission height where CO2 emits infrared radiation to space has increased. In other words, the trapping capacity has increased. Fact one, CO2 traps heat and plays a vital role in our climate. Fact two, increasing the CO2 results in more heat being trapped. Fact three, we have greatly increased the CO2 in the atmosphere. Conclusion, therefore, we are causing the climate to warm. And by the way, with these first three facts, we have the data that backs it all up. This is a deductive, logical argument, unless you can show that one of the premises is false or that a logical fallacy has been committed, you must accept the conclusion. And how do we know that humans are causing the earth to warm and the climate to change? Uh, simple chemistry. And probably a little difficult to see these graphics. I'll try and see if I can explain this here. Uh, simple chemistry, you know, uh, burning uh, carbon-based fuels releases carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, wood, coal, oil, gas. Basic accounting since the 1970s. We keep track of oil and add up how much we burn and therefore can calculate how much CO2 and other pollutants we emit. Measuring in the atmosphere. Measuring CO2 in the atmosphere in remote locations shows that the increase in emissions is indeed increasing atmospheric concentrations. CO2 trapped in ice shows that levels today are much higher than over the past 800,000 years. Chemical analyses. Chemical analysis of the CO2 in the atmosphere reveals that the excess is from burning archaic plants, translation, fossil fuels, that have been buried for millions of years. Basic physics. And, you know, when they do the chemical analysis, what they're talking about is like isotopic fractionation. Basic physics. Certain gases, such as CO2, absorb heat emitted by Earth and prevent it from going to space. This explains why the greenhouse effect is in place. While the uh, Earth isn't frozen, while well, Venus is hotter than hell. <laughs> you know? But also, the troposphere is warming. So if the gas is, if the heat is being trapped by the CO2 and not 
emitted to space explains why the stratosphere is cooling. And don't forget, it's not just CO2, it's methane, it is N2O, nitrous oxide as well. Monitoring climate conditions. Independent temperature records show that the Earth is warming. This warming uh, trend is correlated with the rise in atmospheric CO2, which is resulting from human activities. Ruling out natural factors. Many factors can influence climate conditions, but monitoring and examining natural factors show that they have not, not played a major role in 20th century warming. Scientific analysis reveals that it's not the sun, it's not ocean cycles, it's not plants. When we conduct multivariate regression analyses and so on, we can show that the, the greatest value causing the greatest response is human activities. So in other words, you can conduct uh, these analyses and say, oh, Variable one contributes uh, 7% to the response observed. Variable two contributes uh, 13% to the response observed. Variable three, humans, contributes 75%. Great bulk of it. It's, it's that kind of thing. Okay. Employing computer models. Computer models are tools that scientists use as a virtual laboratory because we can't experiment with the Earth. Although I would argue that burning fossil fuels for 280 years is, burnt, is experimenting with the Earth. Only the inclusion of human activities and climate models can reproduce observed temperature warming. Re now let me repeat that. Only the inclusion of human activities and climate models can reproduce what we have observed and measured. Finally, there's consensus among scientists. Right? Analyzing everything we've been discussing, all the evidence, 97% of 12,000 climate scientists from 74 countries that published in the scientific literature from 94 to 2011, and, and it's more, and it's a higher amount than agree that humans are the main cause of climate change. That number is actually higher. Um, but we, we have a pretty much a, when you have that high a consensus among scientists, that's, a, that's rather telling. So this is a quick little synopsis for those of you who are climate deniers. You can just throw this, you can just cite this all back into their faces and tell them to STFU. But anyway, um, so I, I just wanted to bring this with you, kind of a quick synopsis. This is just a, you know, a, a smidgen of the data and the evidence that demonstrates what humans are doing to the planet. So I said, just a quick little video here, quick little summary. What the hell are we doing? Till next time.